I totally base our success on Warped Tour. Um, only because we toured for a couple of years, driving to shows in a like in a car, in like a couple cars. We'd go out with mom dashes and we'd play in front of five kids, and then 20 kids, and it's like it wasn't getting us anywhere. And a lot of bands do that, but then we did Warped Tour one year, and all of a sudden you have a little bit more kids at those markets, and then you do Warped Tour the second year and you're on a better stage, and all of a sudden, you know, you go back to any of those markets and you have this type of fan base and then you go to the markets you haven't been at Warped Tour and your fan base is still small. So it's like, until you can get on radio or MTV, Warped Tour is the way to go with uh, festival tours because you're going to get in front of so many people that you could never get in front of. And it gets you a diverse crowd because there's so many types of kids here and they just, they, they're eating up the new music, you know, they just want to hear new stuff. So Warped Tour, I can't even put a, a price tag on how much it helped us. It's just been amazing. Pushing the envelope. Well, I like AT Vision. I think it's a, a good rock band. Um, pushing the envelope. I mean, this is the, this is the question in which everyone says you're your yeah. best. Well, that's very nice of them. <laughs> yeah. Bands I really like, uh, like instrumentation wise, like, uh, well, I love Dream Theater. Yeah, oh. that's the, the weirdo in me, but Dream Theater to me is just like the ultimate pinnacle band of like, you know, progressive music. Um, on this tour, I love uh, Billy Talent. I love their vocals. I love the, the vocals in that band. He's got a great voice. Um, I don't know much about pushing the envelope. Anything Mike Patton does, pushing the envelope. Um, what other bands we listen to? See, I suck. I totally listen to, I still listen to the same records. I still listen to Pantera, I listen to Metallica. That's all I listen to. So it's hard for me to say, like, you know, the new stuff. It's, it's hard for me to get into new music. Cool. Uh, name some great songs. Great songs. Hmm. From the Black Album, I love Nothing Else Matters. Um, Fade to Black. Uh, anything from Pantera to me. Um, Hollows, uh, Cemetery Gates, great songs. See, I like all the softer songs, but because uh, to me those are the great songs, you know. But the heavy stuff will get what's get will get you pumped. So uh, anything from those bands, you know. I'm just such a connoisseur of those bands. It's just I love everything they do. That's what I love about them. Put on the record and every song is great. That's what that's what you know. I want Avenge to be. Some cheesy songs. Cheesy songs. Hmm. I really don't know any cheesy songs. Safer not to answer Hey, the last track on Use Your Illusions 2, Guns N' Roses. Oh, Get in the Ring? No, not Get in the Ring. It's uh it's like that techno song that Axel Axel did. Oh yeah. You My World. My World. That's a cheesy song. Yeah. See, those are my two favorite records of all time. Use Your Illusions 1 and 2. And all of a sudden. They have that song at the end of the record, yeah, which kind of yeah. sucks. But that, that, that would be my cheesiest song. Well, it's still better than what Axe is doing now. Yeah, which is nothing. Um, okay, um, so, funny question. If you could, aside from your current man and then some old players, if you could put together your dream band, dream lineup, who would you have? I'd have Brooke Wackerman on the drums. Um, I'd have to play guitar. Probably John Petrucci play guitar. And I'd have Philippe play the bass. And I'd do the vocals. That would be a fucked up band, but it would be cool. But even if I had to change that band for my band, I definitely wouldn't do it. I'm really happy with my band, and I'm stoked about it. To tell you the truth, I enjoy time off because I love I love playing and stuff, but it, it's still work. It's like you don't really have to do anything all day. Like I can't I can't go talk like all day. I'm doing this interview, but just because we love you, Concrete. But uh, I, I, you know you can't talk all day and you sing your set and then I'm not supposed to talk at night. 
just being a vocal is kind of hard on the road, you know. Don't get a drink, but having time off, it's relaxing. You have to think about the good shows and get pumped for the next tour. But it's, it's a good time to get to hang out with your friends and your family. And that's my favorite thing. I get more time off than most people. Yeah, yeah, true. Downloading and stuff. Yeah, like or do you mean like? Your career, your career, um, I think the internet's a quick way for rumors to spread and see things to happen. Uh, I think there's two sides of there's the downloading and there's the message boards where kids just go crazy and kind of ruin the whole music scene on there. Like kids go on there and just talk shit on every band in the world and there's no repercussions because they're not saying anything to anyone's face. You know, like like you wouldn't believe how many things people like say about us on the internet. And then I've never had one kid come up and say anything to my face. You know, it's just. Just kids just try to do shit on there. It's just kind of a joke, but you know, it gives little people, uh, uh, little kids, a place where they can talk their shit and you know, act like they're tough. I guess. But they also give props so much to spread a good word about. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. I mean, we're more of a, a hate internet band where people like like to talk shit, like you know, fags who wear makeup, this and that. It's just you know, that happens to a lot of bands though. But if they're not talking about you, then that's a bad thing. If they are talking about you, it's good publicity. The downloading thing, I think it helps sometimes. I think if you're a multi-million record selling band like Metallica, I think it sucks. Or like, you know, like any band that's sold millions of records because you're going to lose a lot of sales. If you're a band like us that's looking for new fans, it's good because you go to these markets and you have more kids at your shows than CDs you've sold in the market. So you know they're burning your CD, but at least they're buying merchandise, they're supporting your band, maybe they'll buy your next record. So it's good for us, but once you go and sell five million records, then your next record comes out and you do, you know, seven hundred thousand copies, and you know, seven hundred thousand copies are burned. Kind of sucks for your band because, and your label gets mad and they drop you, and then all of a sudden you're losing out on good music because bands can't survive. Bands can't survive from getting ripped off. So. I guess it helps to be a good strong live act, then. It does help to be a good strong live act. Yeah, that's got to be an important thing. You got to have so many different aspects your band, you got to be a good live band, you have to be a good studio band, and uh, you have to be available to people and like be able to communicate with people and let them know, let them feel like as though they're a part of something. There's a lot of different things that are really important with a band. Do you get online ever and chat with the fans? I'll go on our message board every once in a while and talk to kids, and they, they enjoy that. So I'll do that just because I'm on there anyways, just checking stuff out and seeing what's going on. Seen the latest rumor about Avenged Sevenfold. The I've heard the good word of mouth. I don't know. Oh, you got to hear the good one. That one on our message board now is that Zacky and Sinister were in Guitar Center, and some kid was playing a riff, and they took out their recorders out of their pockets and recorded it, and that's what Unholy Confessions is. So we stole Unholy Confessions from some kid at Guitar Center. That's the rumor. Like, and kids actually, some kids actually believe it. They're all, dude, that's fucked up. That's it's like, who carries a recorder on them? You know, like, it's unbelievable. But kids start believing that stuff because they're, yeah, well. <laughs> 